you know, I remember getting the magazines and seeing like this incredible looking amazing redhead with this big jacked black dude and it was really like something different in wrestling i feel like at the time because you really didn't see like now i feel like in independent wrestling you sit like intergender wrestling is just like almost like it's just happens but like i feel like you know someone like yourself and even like lefisto back in that era were really like the pioneers of it and you know if they didn't have two amazing workers like yourself and lefisto to really catapult it i don't think it would be what it is today thank you i appreciate that uh yeah i, I agree <laughs> <So> <laughs> we did a lot of things that uh literally kicked open doors for women i, I i'm not sure that we get the credit for it so that's really appreciated thank you very much and my body um feels it every day <laughs> so I'm always reminded of it, even if the girls today don't know. So there you go. Yeah, for sure. What was it like back in that era? Because it was kind of like, like wrestling has always kind of been like a, a boys club. And I can imagine, you know, you heard the sort of stories with, you know, China when she was coming up, those guys that were like, I'm not doing that. And she was bigger than a lot of the guys back then as well. Did you face that same sort of, you know, roadblocks when it was like, hey, we got this idea and some guys were like, yeah, I'm not putting you over like that. I'm not going to yeah. let you get one over on me. Uh, yeah. Well, yes, <laughs> I did. Um, the guys were either like super great about it. Like they thought it was fun. They're like, yeah, I'll sell my ass off for you. Or they were like, not happening. Let's do it this way. So it mm. seemed like it was either or, um, you know, and the, uh, it, it's a team thing. Once you get in the ring, as sure. uh, you know, I was trained by Killer Kowalski, so the uh, we, he had several sayings. You know, like the only four letter word is "can't," and another one is if you get the entire match over, everybody gets over. So a lot of times people are so intent on getting themselves over, the whole match doesn't get over. So uh, that's how I was trained. So if mm somebody there who was a veteran had a better idea i was trained to pay attention to that and mm. uh learn from it but 100%. yeah that's, i did deal with that and um I, I was fortunate to be able to work with a lot of guys i was also 15 pounds heavier so mm. now i'm a lot smaller now so <laughs> <laughs> i went i went back to school in uh and graduated in 2019 and i went to a 24 7 school i went to full sale university and it's literally a 24 seven accelerated school for your degree program. And I sat in front of this computer a lot. So my workouts were super condensed and it was challenging. Um, but um, yeah, we were, uh, as far as um, uh, my tag partner and I we were the first intergender, I believe we we're the first intergender tag team to ever win titles. And then wow. repeatedly. Um, and I think the first interracial tag team, as far as that too. Now, of course, Dudley's and all that. But I mean, sure. as far as uh, male-female. So um, we additionally caught heat for that too, because it was early 2000s and this was not really a thing. No, it definitely wasn't, you know, and one of the things that I, I really get annoyed with when, when fans sort of start talking about the business is when they put, throw out the word, it's not believable or believable. <laughs> and there's like, oh, it can't be believable. And I'm like, it, it's pro wrestling. It, yeah. Everything can be made to be believable if it's done in a way which is creative. And, and that's where I really found like the work that you did back then was just it, it, it was creative. Like you weren't really put in spots that were, took it out of the realm of possibility of where you could do. It. And I feel like Lefisto did the same thing with her matches when she was doing, you know, wrestling against men. It was always things that would be in the realm of the believability of it and the, the movement of it. And, and that's where I think like a lot of people don't really understand. And it's like in professional wrestling, you can make everything and anything believable. Yeah. And I think uh, one of the, advantages she and I both had was we trained in Japan and Mexico. Mm -hmm. So she and I were sort of on the same circuit where we were working Europe, Canada, America, Mexico, um, you know, 
Japan a lot. So we were, we had the advantage of learning all these styles, you know, going, staying, um, you know, having to train in the, in the dojos or in the rings pre, you know, prior to the, to the shows. Like I remember in Mexico, there was a trainer there named Minyako, um, and he would pick three of us up and take us over to the boxing ring and teach us boxeo y lucha. Oh, we would go on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a boxeo dropout. So <laughs> 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 that was not my jam. So, um, I, but I, I have mad, mad respect for people that uh, are boxers because that is a very challenging sport. <laughs> but we, um, went, we went through the rigors to do it. And then um, we also learned MMA too. Like um, it was, we, couldn't, we learned all around because we had to learn how to protect ourselves also. Like Kowalski used to take me aside. I was the only female in the class and he would teach me like proctor point takedowns and how to get out of certain holds. If somebody shoots on me, I remember when I was booked for Japan and he's like, they might try to fuck with you over there. So I'm going to show you some things. <laughs> oh, well. I was like, okay. So 